sound is recording. Yeah, go we ahead. Live. Okay, good. Hello, everybody. And uh, this is resource software hour number 20. Uh, welcome to the session. Today, we will talk about data. So data is uh, whenever we uh, run software and write software, we hopefully always also produce data. Mm -hmm. And today, we will talk about data, how to how to format data, how to prepare data, how to how to share, release, mm -hmm. how to make it fair, and what that means. And uh, with, so I'm not one past calling in from Tromso under heavy snow. Mm -hmm. And with me is Anne. Yeah, so I'm Anne from uh, Oslo, and there is no snow at all. Mm -hmm. It's very sunny, at least today. <laughs> and Richard. Yeah, I'm calling from Helsinki. Here, there, well, the snow outside my window is almost gone and sunny, but interesting enough, there were snowflakes in the late afternoon. So, yeah. So welcome, okay. super looking forward. Before we go into, into the topic, I should remind that we have this HackMD document for questions and comments, and this is also the place where we will share links. Uh, I posted it in the Twitch chat. Uh, what I don't know is, does the people who join, do they see the history of the chat? Should we post it again? We should post it again. Mm -hmm. Should I? What are you? Uh, I'm working on it. Okay, good. Yeah. So that's the place where you can ask questions and edit and also complete us where we miss something. So again, today we talk about data, data preparation, and really the the purpose of this session is um, imagine uh, somebody comes to you and says, um, "I have to really, I have to release some data." What does that mean? How to do it? How to how to organize it? How to share data? We will go over that, and we would like to discuss this today. Uh, in the so we will be also watching the chat for questions in the HackMD. Uh, well, not too many questions there now. Um, what we will also do at the end of the session, we have some session notes. So at the end of the session, I will also copy paste our session notes into the HackMD. But I will do it at the end because last time I felt it was then not very clear where to ask questions because I was copy pasting a lot of text in there. OK. So we thought about structuring this in three parts. And part one, uh, part one will be about data management plans. I think maybe many of you have heard of, of data management plans or filled out data management plans. Um, and I would like to find out what that is and how it works and how to use it in a good way. And I will ask. I will ask Anne lots of questions about it. So what is uh, what is a data management plan? So good question. So there are two different answers. The one is a, a piece of paper or a piece of uh, something online we need to fill to get to our allocation or our money, which is a mandatory part of the data management plan. Mm -hmm. And the second part is uh, something very useful for a research team a group or a researcher and i think we we can discuss both mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i we should always try to make it useful and this is what yeah. i realized recently <laughs> yeah and i think this is a good point to make it useful because many people when they hear data management plan maybe they hear oh this is something i have to fill out maybe they don't see really the point of it another form to fill out so what is what is wrong with the historical process? Um, I don't think there is anything wrong with the historical process. There is also something wrong with, at, at least me, the way I um, handle this historical process. Because we, we are super busy, and when we have this form to fill, it's like oh, another one. <laughs> and we are not really prepared. Yeah. And you fill it very quickly. Uh, I copy past a lot of things, to be frankly honest. And the data management plan I mm -hmm. used to do was pretty useless. So it means it was written, it was sent, 
and that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then the real work, I still had to do it. When you have data coming, when you need to think about the format and uh, how to, what to do with your data, I still had to do it. So it means I had another work to do, mm -hmm. which I wasn't uh, prepared at all mm -hmm. because I never done a good data management plan. Yeah. And I guess and before, mm -hmm. go ahead. So I guess this whole concept came from the open science movement where funders wanted people to release their data or at least make it more useful to other people. Is it? I mean, I, I'm, I'm now I'm really it... wondering. I think founders never ask for anything hmm. they, because they don't, uh, they don't even read the data <laughs> management plan. You think they don't read them? No, I mean, why would they? Uh, I, I think yeah. at some point it, it's true. This is a very good yeah. uh, thing to have a data management plan, but mm -hmm. nobody really try to think about um, yeah. what is really uh, useful for a researcher mm -hmm. to have in a data mm -hmm. management plan. Mm -hmm. And um, before we uh, before we discuss how we how to set up a data management plan, so what what is actually the motivation? Because you also mentioned that it's actually really good to have. It can be good to have. So how? how... I don't say it can. It is. <laughs> I mean, and I really changed my mind in that sense. Mm -hmm. For me now, uh, the data management is a bit like the workflow. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like Git for software. Um, when you don't know what is Git or what is version control, uh, you always say, well, it's not for me. I don't need it. I can do what, uh, what I used to do and I can carry on. And then once you know, and you have experience uh, Git and version control, you say, but I, I cannot do without, I mean, this is uh, not possible. I cannot write a software without version control. And I think it's the same for a data management plan. It's mm -hmm. really super useful, but you need to make it useful for you. So when you write it, forget founder, they don't care anyway. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. do it for you and for your team. Mm -hmm. And another question that I just see popping up somewhere is that, um, so should the data management plan be basically uh, a copy paste of best practices sort of by default? And I think copy paste both ways so that we can put the best practices into the data management plan, but also that we can later take the best practices from the data management plan. Um... I don't think this is, should be like best practices. We should apply the best practices in the data management plan. I mean, if this is to repeat the best practices, it's maybe not super useful. No. Um, it's like, I think that if someone's trying to decide what to do with data, they don't want to figure out what to do. They'll ask us, okay, what should I do? And we'll say, okay, here's what works for typical projects like you like yours with these services and so on. Yeah, and then I see, yeah, you're right. I mean, there they... are these good, uh, like best practices, mm -hmm. uh, which you will also discuss later, like Radovan with the format and uh, mm -hmm. how to release your data. So this is like some kind of generic best practices, yeah. but it can be very concrete uh, in terms of yeah. what data do you have? Where, where do you get your data? Mm -hmm. In which format? What is the size? Mm -hmm. Do you need to process mm -hmm. your data? Which with which software will you use? Mm -hmm. uh, and you can already start to write uh, all the different steps mm -hmm. in your analysis. It's uh, more like a workflow, but like mm -hmm. a manual workflow, and it could turn, be turned into an automatic workflow in the future. I mean, at the end, yeah. ultimately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have some example for how you actually prepare one or? So I can show you the, the because uh, I can show you what they ask us to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And I can also sh show you what uh, what I do and I think sometimes it's not good. So I don't know <laughs> if I can share my screen. Yeah. Um, yes, screen two. So this is uh, for instance mandatory in Norway. You should see this easy DMP. Mm -hmm. So now it's mandatory when you ask for an allocation, for instance, or any project, you need to uh, create a data management plan. Uh, this, so is, us... this is by the infrastructure providers that want. So this to... one is for infrastructure. So this is another, it's good to mention this, Richard, because we usually need to have a data management plan for like the Norwegian Research Council or the Research mm -hmm. Council uh, mm -hmm. in Norway and 
one when you ask for computing resources mm -hmm. and they have uh, sometimes different format it's not necessarily the same yeah now it's much more homogeneous so what i found a bit really a bit odd is when you fill the uh, the data management plan this is very early in the process mm -hmm. so before you start they ask you to fill something so they ask you to fill some generic information Mm -hmm. which is fine you can put uh, your title you can pass your summary mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. like copy paste so i find that this is super boring to copy mm -hmm. paste this kind mm -hmm. of information yeah we can uh, uh, put where we get the funding who is doing what and uh, then there is a section about data but mm. when you start you don't know much about the data mm. because you haven't done anything so mm -hmm. for instance this project it hasn't mm. started we will start in june but now mm -hmm. we are requesting for computing resources and storage. Mm -hmm. So what we put is very approximate. Yeah. OK, yeah. we know what kind of license. So this is more best practices. And I don't see the point of copy past this kind of information. Mm -hmm. I, I would like just to say, yeah, we will follow best practices <laughs> and that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the same for the metadata. So they mm -hmm. ask you for metadata, what you will be using. Um, and it's the same. Sometimes you don't know exactly because you haven't looked at the data yet, especially if this is a completely new project. Mm -hmm. But you can say, I will uh, I will uh, check the data, blah, blah, blah. But this is mostly blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So is this is any, typically. Uh, sorry, is there any like good guide for how to fill these things out? Um, if, oh, if, yeah, I mean, I... here they have guides uh, and mm -hmm. every this is the same if you use this DMP online from uh, UK. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, you have something similar in Finland, Richard. Yeah, like also Alto has both templates and some online service yeah. to do it. But And the documentation is pretty good. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. but this is very uh, high level, I, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And I think interesting is also the later points, like what happens at the end of the project, because this is something that many projects don't think about. Yeah. So, I, I mean, for instance, storage is the same. They ask you to plan f for each year from mm. 2020 mm. to 2024. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it means this is really rough. Yeah. Uh, and I, I found this is really uh, something that we should, uh, I mean, we, and we will reassess for sure, but I, I don't see the point of asking for, this is a five-year project, why yeah. do you ask me from the beginning? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we will find a better way to handle data and to compress, and maybe we'll not use yeah. so much. But we give some, uh, some, uh, some, Approximately, I don't think it really helps mm -hmm. the Sigma two, for instance. Yeah. Maybe it helps the project to at least think about it, or instead of just going into it. So I honestly think it thing. doesn't help anyone because the numbers we put is really um, more or less random. Okay, hopefully nobody listening from. <laughs> nobody from Sigma two is listening. But I mean, who would imagine? No, but this to be it's very known. hard to estimate. Yes. Here we estimate like if we had all the raw data at the same time mm -hmm. on disk in yeah. the project area. Mm -hmm. But this is not how we work. Yeah. You will get some data, you will process, yes. so it will be streamlined. And mm -hmm. this we, we don't really know yet. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's, it's really like the total. What, what is under the end of the project? So, what, what are the so this, this I think is really nice. In that sense, it, uh, it will, you need to think about what you will do after. And I think it's new. Uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, available before. Yeah. So do you plan to to make uh, some of all your data available to others? Uh, and then mm. it they ask you where. Uh, and this, I think this is very good to think from the beginning, where you will release your data. Mm -hmm. Because so. you, you need to think very early how you will need to prepare your data. And this is what you will discuss. Yeah. Because at the end, the, ulti the I mean, the ultimate goal of a data management plan is to be able to share and collaborate on the, on the data. So this, I think, it's quite uh, quite nice. Yeah. So I have a question about this. So, like in the metadata section, it says how, like, what are the, let's see, like, what kind of questions are there? Can you go up a bit more? So this yeah, is like very that. short. What metadata and documentation do you plan to provide with your data? But, but, and what data quality? But that sort of assumes that there's one kind of data in here. Well, any project I know would have like the raw data, the intermediate data, several other kinds of intermediate data. 
figures, yes. like all this kind of stuff. Oh, and you can then, so you can put for each of know. them. Yeah, but um, will people like? What's the point here? Like, I, I, I mean, think here for, this is for this normally out. it should be for you, you know, for to think about. Yeah. What but, metadata? Uh, what metadata do you need? And this I found this is very hard at the beginning of the project mm -hmm. because you only know the raw data. Yeah. Uh, but you need to think about uh, metadata for for publishing, for releasing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you will discuss probably about yeah. it. Um, and then, so second, some of our data groups are designed to be for a group instead of for a project. So it's basically the place where all the other group's data goes that doesn't have a better spot. And this can basically be anything. So of course this gets a lot more unorganized, but the other option would be people would just leave all their data on their own computers and like, well, it's not here and it's even yeah. worse planned than this. So, yes. Like, and the thing is, uh, this document, what? this is what you send and this is what they have, mm -hmm. but this is the beginning. I mean, for me, this is like uh, mm -hmm. not very useful yet. The project hasn't started, but we mm -hmm. will modify the data management plan yeah. because uh, once we will start to download some data, we will check metadata and we'll mm -hmm. think about how we will prepare the output for uh, releasing and mm -hmm. publishing. So we'll mm -hmm. have a lot more information as we go and as we work in the project. Yeah. But uh, and this this document will have different version. <laughs> But nobody really talk about the uh, the next version. They mostly, mm -hmm. when you think about data management plans, this is what you are thinking about. Mm -hmm. This very preliminary uh, yeah. list of uh, information you copy past mm -hmm. yeah. from different uh, projects, and this is and not the, the most useful part. Right. I think and this is what is coming next. And we are also getting really good questions or. On on HackMD, uh, uh -huh. questions that um, the data mentioned part should ask, and maybe some do. And these are really great questions. Uh, and thanks for that. So where are you going to like? Where are you going to store the data? And and especially yes. who is going to pay for it after the project ends? I think really nobody thinks about that, but storage costs. So who will pay for that? Um, yeah. So here they, they ask for it. This. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they ask, where will you store your data? Uh, and uh, this is associated with Sigma 2, so they, it means at the same time you can ask for storage. Yes. And then at the end of the project, uh, it's uh, where you will make your data accessible. Mm. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Who will have How access? Do you... uh, so there um... is no cost associated. It's true, they don't say, but they ask you who will be able to do that after mm -hmm. the end of the mm. project. Mm -hmm. But also these really practical questions on uh, like what will happen when when the drive fails um what will happen if mm -hmm. something gets accidentally deleted i mean these things happen we all know we all know cases where entire yeah. phds have been deleted <laughs> uh, also what happens if after the phd postdoc leaves yeah uh, the so there is a and i think here this is quite good they ask for a data owner Mm -hmm. uh, da, da, da. Who yeah. will be the data officer for your project? Mm -hmm. And uh, it needs to to have someone who will uh, uh, stay. Yeah. And uh, you yeah. need to put your detail, more information. Yeah. So. But guess... yeah, I think this is very good question, and this is uh, the kind of question you need to ask and you need to answer in your data management plan. Yeah. So even if this is not directly asked in the in the form, this is typically the kind of question you want to write down. So um, especially, like for instance, uh, where do you store your data? And if this is extremely valuable data, like observation, mm -hmm. is super expensive. Yes. Uh, make sure it's not on a drive. And it's good to also uh, agree on it within the research yes. group, just to have an agreement, just to talk about it. And uh, yes. um, so one question here that came in on HackMD, does this DMP, the data management plan, does it take the place of a readme file? Uh, yeah, that's a very good, uh, yeah. I, li I like this because for me, it's a bit like a readme file. Mm -hmm. And if it is a readme file, is this where people would look like, does the whole group have access to this? Or is this something that someone does? 
Like, if I was recommending yes. a group to do something, I would say every one of our allocated data directories should have a readme in the root that answers these questions for the group and is kept up to date. And then like, we'll, we can put in our instructions. We check there when, if we had to do something. Yeah, that's a very good point. And I mean, for instance, here you can add collaborators, so all the uh, team can mm -hmm. collaborate. And this is very important, what you said, Richard. Yeah. Everyone needs to agree on it. Yeah. So it's not one person writing the DMP and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's everyone in the team mm -hmm. agreeing on the procedure. Yeah. I guess I could so, say what mm -hmm. at Alto we ask for when someone gets a data storage space allocated if you'd like to hear. So we request the owners of the data who can provide access within the university, the quota, the different network storage locations and expiration date, and a general description of what it is and what to do if the data owners become unaccessible, which by default is the supervisor of that person and on up the hierarchy. And that's stuff that we can like take action on and all the rest is sort of like the group's issue to deal with and we can't really force anyone to do anything about that anyway so mm. but yeah that's a, a, i think that's a very good point interesting to... but like having yes. the structured place if it was usable would be nice uh, we are now 25 minutes in. Yeah. What, oh. what did we forget about DMPs? Um, <laughs> what do we forget? One thing to remember is uh, it's, it's a live document. Yeah. And uh, at the beginning, when I people were saying, is it a live document? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a <laughs> bit like a word, it's live. But now I really understand what it means. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really growing. Just like a readme file. Put a, yeah, it's like, really like the readme, but the readme is, is moving from a readme to a full documentation. Mm -hmm. I think the history of it is interesting because then one can look at lessons learned over the course of the project. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And you are growing as you do more project and working on more DMP. I think you also as an individual mm -hmm. or team is growing and learning. On yeah. how to organize your data. <laughs> okay, so next I think Radovan would like to talk some about the middle part of the process. Are we ready for that? Or yes, anything yes, else? We are ready. I just need to share this. I just want to share like one slide here. So I will talk about I want to say something about the tidy data format. Yeah, so this which is, is just, uh, it can be useful. So the question is how to how to store data. Yeah. I just need to readjust here. It doesn't let me. How does it look? So this That's is very um, good now. looking good. Yeah, yeah it's now. So, so this is taken from a slide, and I will also share the slide. But I use that in a in a course, and. So one way to store data is in a spreadsheet. And this question is not really about are spreadsheets good or bad. So it's not about that. It's it's more um, maybe let me let me explain what we see here. So what we see is some fantasy data. So these are some observations of some Arctic animals. So Arctic fox and walrus and reindeer and polar bear somewhere in I don't know Svalbard, north north of Norway. And we have three observation sites, A, B, C, mm -hmm. and then we count how many animals do we see. And then I also use some color coding there. So blue means uh, there was some problem with the camera, and red means there was the same animal, but it well, it ran in front of the camera twice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you have seen such a data storage, but I mean, I have seen such a data storage, and I have created such data. Yeah, I wanted to say I created some kind of yeah. My data used to look <laughs> like. <laughs> And my question is, um, what is what is the possible problem with such a data, storing data in this way? Yeah. Hmm. I'm really curious what you'll say, because until I found this tidy data concept, I knew 
I could sort of feel why data would be bad, but couldn't really explain it. And here I can feel that like it's not automatically processable somehow. Yes. And like I have to do a lot of manual work to work on it, but can you explain how to put that into a definition somehow? Yes, so there are a couple of problems, and one is this tidy. It's not in a tidy data format, but I will say what it is. Also, it's a spreadsheet, which is not really a problem by itself, but it can make it a bit more complicated for me to automatically do something with the data in a different program. Mm. Of course, I can export it, but if I want to now really visualize it, I, I kind of have to visualize it in this program or I have to export it, so I have to do another mm -hmm. step. Well, another problem that I see here is this blue and red. Of course, if I, if again, if I, as a human, look at it, I, I can understand what's going on, but it will be difficult, again, to script it. Mm -hmm. So for the script to look at colors will be a bit complicated. Yeah. And so let me, I have like one more slide. Do you have it in a better format? Yeah, there is a better format, but oh, oh wait, I'll mm -hmm. we'll just move it here. So this is still not a tidy data format. Mm -hmm. It's I call it I don't know messy. I'm not sure whether this is the right nomenclature. So the question is, how do we have these different observation sites and these different animals, and then we ask ourselves, how should we arrange them? Mm -hmm. Should we should I have the observation sites as a columns and the animals as rows, or should I have the animals as columns mm. and and then if I so if I have this tabular data I can then save it into some format but one possible problem with this uh, is that uh, so I have I store the data somehow and I will comment on that but later we rewrite our scripts to to read it and to plot the data and we we, we create some nice plots but the problem is, what if later in the project we decide that we want to add more observation sites? Observation mm -hmm. site B and E. Or I want to, there, there are suddenly there are new animals to be, to be measured. Then I need to add additional columns to the table. And then I need to adapt my scripts. Mm -hmm. So in my Python script or R script, I suddenly have to say, you know, read column three and four and five, and I have to go in and mm. modify the script. So it's like somehow you're not just modifying the observations, but to modify what you're calculating, you have to modify something about the structure of the data. In this case, yes. you add more columns for something that is the same yeah. type as the previous columns. Exactly. So although the, it's, it's still the same structure of the data, but suddenly I have more measurements but now I have to change even my analysis, mm -hmm. which can be a bit annoying, especially if you mm -hmm. didn't write the analysis. Mm -hmm. And so the alternative is the so-called tidy data format. Boom. And I will put the link to the to, to the paper uh, by uh, by Wickham uh, in, into the session notes. And in a, in the tidy data format, uh, we the columns are variables. So in this case, observation site is a variable, the species is a variable, and a number of sightings is a variable. And each row is an observation. So in the first row, we saw an Arctic fox on the observation site A three times. And this way, I can, I can add more species and more observations and more observation sites Mm -hmm. without changing the structure of how I store the tabular data and without changing the analysis scripts. So this is easy to extend. It's extensible. And I guess the same code would run through. And if there's an extra letter, well, it just sees an extra letter. And yes. that's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and many, if we store the data in this format, so of course there are, so the advantage is that it's extensible and many plotting libraries and like pandas and they they understand this. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the slight disadvantage is that, well, I will 
it's not the most space efficient storage form, yeah. but well, maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, it sounds like in most cases it shouldn't matter. And is it sort of like, mm, so when processing things like this, then you don't need to write your own code so much, but I think there's some sort of primitives that let you do things like, does this relate to split, apply, combine, or things like that somehow? Exactly. Like, so you could filter, uh, uh, so you could read this into, I mean, our data frames, Pandas data frames, and then mm -hmm. filter, ask it questions, tell me all the observation side where we have yeah. seen the walrus. Mm -hmm. um, and this format is, I would say, standard, and yeah. then we don't have to do so much work. Yeah. Uh, so what do you recommend if we had the previous format uh, to to pre-process and save this and re delete the previous one? Let's say you have instrument, for instance. Uh, yeah. So you what, can also convert what would you between recommend? the two. So if you had these like previous forms and you wanted to convert, also yeah. that can be done automatically. But you could write your own script. But I mean, there are reshaping functions, especially for a new project. I would uh, I would take that. But one could also reshape uh, the data. I should also say that storing data and sharing data is something different than putting the table into a publication. So in a publication, maybe maybe this is nicer to look at for humans. Right. So a, yeah. You need to do different things for putting it in a paper as a table or having it as a data. Yeah, CSV like file. what your raw original format is that you're storing for future analysis yes. and all that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And stop the share. Where would I learn more about um, tidy data stuff? Like, do you have any suggestions for how to get this mindset in with what we do? Like, if I need to put my data in tidy format, how would I start approaching that? Um, I think it's good exercise to take one table or one, yeah, to take a table from a publication and uh, mm -hmm. imagine how would how would I structure this? What would I put into the column? What would I put it into the row? And if you know something about the data and the process and the models, mm -hmm. okay, what would happen if I if I added an additional model? Um, so that mm -hmm. the so that the shape of the I see. Yeah. the table doesn't change. Yeah, like oh, like like. Is perturbation analysis the right way? Like, let's say I extend my my work to a different model, and then I extend it to different inputs. Yeah. And for each of these, is your data format robust for that? And if it is, does that mean it's tidy? And it's also iterative. I mean, it's maybe we don't know at the beginning, but because we start with something, but then the supervisor comes, hey, I have a new idea. How about mm -hmm. we also mm -hmm. have a look at this and this? And then, then maybe we need to readjust. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's the, there is maybe not the one right way, but I think it's good to know about this format. I also wanted to say that please, when you store your data, go for standard data formats, if possible. So not to re, not to invent my own, but mm -hmm. uh, using standard data formats like CSV, comma separated values, or NumPy arrays, or mm -hmm. NetCDF, or so. How do you choose yeah. which one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good question. <laughs> We've had I'm some sure. uh, people ask this in our garage, and we have big list of things. But the answer is, well, it depends. So if that, if it's like ta tabular data, then I like to go for CSV, unless mm. it's unless it's like gigabytes. Then mm. then then no. So if it's I don't know five thousand lines. If yeah. completely fine to go with CSV. Mm -hmm. If it's hierarchical data, so if it if it if I would put it in a table and it would be a table with lots of empty holes, mm -hmm. then maybe something else than a, a mm -hmm. CSV file. Mm -hmm. Then 
I don't know, JSON, YAML, XML. Or if it's uh, binary data, NumPy arrays, yeah. or NetCDF, HDF5. So depending on the size, but something yeah. standard that can be read and written from different languages yeah. and different programs. Okay, so m most likely you will uh, check first what is uh, common in your yes. community, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. will you check uh, papers, for instance, how do they save it? Or is it good way or bad way? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what we often do. I think we often yeah. do, we often copy what other people do. But it but also means that... Sometimes we copy something wrong, no? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we also have to change, otherwise it would never introduce new things. Yeah. So not everything was better in the past. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess... put the link to the paper in the, in the notes. I guess more important than anything is what people already do in your field and what the tools support. How does tidy data relate to things like SQL normal forms or SQL and like databases and things like that? I think it's a great question because I think they are related. Maybe they are like maybe the same idea mm -hmm. invented in two different places with two different names. I think yeah. that's it's a very similar idea. Yeah. I don't know precisely, but I saw mm -hmm. both names uh, yeah. being mentioned when discussing that. And there is more in the paper, which I read some time ago. And I think actually that paper discusses this. OK, yeah. Maybe I have time for okay. one more tip, and that is um, metadata. So it's really good to store not only the data, but also some description about what the data actually means. Mm -hmm. Um, so not only the numbers, but there should be, like if I look at the CSV comma separated values, then mm -hmm. the top row tells me something about what is in the columns and what is in the rows. Yeah. So that's one form of metadata. So what um, would we do, for instance, if you we go back to your table, what mm -hmm. metadata would you add? Like for this uh, site A, B, C, what, would you add something or what would we add? Is there enough metadata in that one? Or? Yeah, good question, because we have this observation side and the species. And that's that's already better than nothing, better than just numbers. Mm -hmm. But it's maybe not not sufficient, because maybe we should add more metadata, like who took the data, which year, um, mm -hmm. which time of the day. Um, so where, where you cannot really add it in the table itself. Doug. Exactly. So it needs to go somewhere else, but somewhere close to the data. So where should we keep it? And I don't know, <laughs> but uh, so, so is when it I like a readme file? I mean, I... Yeah. yeah, I don't have a good answer. So I'm not a super expert here, but I would try to have it as close as possible to the data. So if I if my data is called, I don't know, my data dot CSV, maybe I would have like my data underscore meta or readme, uh, some, something really close to the data so that I know where it came from. Because in the, in the CSV, no, right. um, I don't know, the, in Tabula, you yeah. can have a header, you can have a very mm -hmm. big header, and they, it starts only to read after a special line uh, character. Yeah. Okay. So you could put a lot in the header, mm -hmm. I think. Yes. I don't so know maybe it would be mm -hmm. even better than a separate file. Yes, if, it, if it's possible to put it in the same file, that's even better, always better. So if we can put comments in, and then also the data author, what is the license? who to contact about questions. Mm -hmm. If this came from a code, mm -hmm. which it almost always does, uh, right. at least the version of the code, or git hash. Uh, if it was, if it comes from a program that was compiled, maybe I can put in the compiler versions, which compiler, how did I build the code, just to make the reproducibility easier. Mm -hmm. So is there like a minimum list of metadata I could add? I always try to find, I'm, uh, I'm mm. always struggling to, f to find yeah. like uh, the minimum set of uh, metadata <laughs> to add. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like oh. what you mentioned, license, the author, yeah. dates, etc. It would be nice to have like a checklist. Mm. And we may talk about that in the next section, I think. Okay, yeah. good, yeah. Well, I guess we can make sure we do. Yeah. Yeah. I think if okay. I can answer that in like one sentence, that would be if you find you find a hard drive on my desk <laughs> and I open it up and there is some file. Yeah. Oh, what do I just to understand where this thing came from? What does it? Who does it belong to? Who to ask? And how was this? Well, how was this produced? 
if I want to reproduce it. That would be good. Yeah. But that was study oh. data, and we yeah. should move on. So I mean, but it, it links uh, to the next uh, sec next part because uh, metadata is probably key yeah. if we want to release and share, uh, Richard. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, like this last section is about releasing data. So basically you've done this stuff, you have the sort of plan and then you put it in a good format and now you want to make it useful to someone else, which is very related to having it in a good format yourself. But yeah. So to guide the section, there's this acronym FAIR, which I'm sure many of you have heard. Um, but I think that might be a reasonable way to talk about things. So to sort of begin the discussion, I'd say you want to share your data with someone. What do you not want to do? Well, you don't want to have in the bottom of a paper that says, if you want this data, please email me because, well, you're eventually going to not be available and then your data won't be. And this sort of isn't acceptable to journals or funders anymore. They require it to be in a repository, which is somewhere that other people can look it up and find it. Basically a permanent record, like a library of data. Well, is it, is it, you can add them as an annex or auxiliary mm. data too. Yeah. So what do you recommend in that case to... Well, so I'm not a big fan of most journal publishers, so I'd recommend using a publicly funded repository mm -hmm. outside the journal. But I mean, if it is part of the journal article as supplementary information, that's fine too, as long as it's somewhere that people can get, get it. And there are, well, yeah. So there are lists of all these different possible repositories that tell you different properties of them, like who is funding it? What is the availability of things? Like, is it expected to be there in a hundred years? What's the secession plan if it goes out of business and someone has to take it over? Is that so? We're going back to the data management plan. Yeah, exactly. That's the same question we had yeah. actually, and this is I think this is a good point. Yeah. Because at this point, when you release, mm -hmm. I want uh, Richard, you give me more uh, concrete answers, and yes, we will put yeah. this and we will do that. Yeah, you know, it's like in most of these workshops on data management plans, it talks a lot about making the plan, but not how to actually manage the data. Well, yeah. to me, I would teach people how to manage data and then as an afterthought, okay, here's how you can write it down if you need to. But in fact, this I is find. the same. This is really the data management plan because uh, you yeah. need to think about it. You need to do it step well. by step. And if you if you have done it properly, mm -hmm. now uh, we should be able to, to yeah. know where to well. release the data. Maybe your workshops have been a bit better than the ones I've been Oh, no, to, I but... have no workshop. <laughs> I just do it. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway. where do you release your data, Richard? Yeah. Well, the first F of FAIR is findable, which means someone is able to know your data exists and sort of, well, yeah, know it exists. So there's different properties of this. So one is that there's some identifier for it. Like how do you find some data and refer to it? By URL, what if that changes? What if the website goes down? By uh, the name of the paper, well, that's not very unique and that there can be other papers with the same name some, some year. So instead, that's why you have things like DOIs, which are normally for uh, papers, but also can be used for data or things like URN and, well, there's a few other standards for this. Um, and also for software. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So where, um, do you, yeah. where do you get uh, DOI's DOI? Yeah. So what I would always say is getting the DOI isn't your concern. Your concern is finding a good repository and the repository handles mm -hmm. all of this. In fact, for most of these questions, the answer is 
I do what the repository says. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later also. Actually, no, we'll get to it right okay. now. Yeah. So it says data are described with rich metadata. So what does this mean? So once I gave a little presentation entitled, I don't like metadata, asterisk, asterisk, the word. So why? Because it can mean different things. So for some people, it means the structured information you enter into the repository is cataloging information. Like this is the journal article reference. This is the date. These are the authors. This is the date it was created and so on. And for some people, it means the header files in the CSV or the readme file that describes how to use the data. So I guess this is the difference between a general purpose repository and a specialized repository. So in a general purpose repository, it just stores files and doesn't know much about the contents of the files. So this is like Zenodo. So it can know some things about things like geographic data and so on, and you can describe, okay, this is the region it covers. But if I upload a chemical structure there, it just knows it's a file and maybe a bit more you tell about it. But there's more specialized repositories. So a consortium of which a group at Alto is a part of makes a rem repository called Nomad. I don't remember exactly what it stands for, but it's maybe it's novel material Can something. you show us this Nomad? Mm -hmm. I've never seen that. Yeah, let's see. Uh... So it's still general purpose. Or so, is it, uh, but it's focused on chemical structures or material structures. So you can presumably search for things like um, here is I want a metallic material that has hardness greater than such and such. And you can find something that matches that. Um, I'm still trying to find it here. Just a minute. Mm. So actually, you recommend to to take a domain specific repository. Yeah. So if your field has a domain specific repository, then that is probably what you want to use. Mm. And you'll know this because, um, well, you work in the field. But yeah, your colleagues or your supervisor will yeah. tell you. If you don't have a domain specific repository, then you do whatever. And I'd always say it's better to put it somewhere on Zenodo than do nothing. So sometimes you might have data and for your work, you don't need to structure it enough to put it in a domain specific repository or something. And for that, I'd say better to release it somehow and let someone else improve it than try to um, do too much yourself. Okay. Have you ever heard uh, somebody saying that in my research field we don't actually generate any data? Oh uh, yeah, I, yes, I, yeah. I've heard it too. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. I'm searching by I want elements carbon and oxygen and properties. Well what I want. And I want the eigenvalues of the molecule. And let's see. So here are some of the calculated structures. And I guess if I click on it, there's a formula. Can I see a picture of it? I guess somewhere I could probably download the raw structure. But anyway, so you see this whole thing is designed around searching chemical structures and uploaded things from. Yeah, yeah. I guess, but that's nice factors. because it's not only for, I mean, this is not only for machines mm -hmm. because fair, we, we always refer to machines, but mm -hmm. here this is quite readable mm -hmm. for, like yeah. for a researcher. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could say it's the machine that can read it and then present it to the user in the searchable way. Yeah, so. I, I mean, it's useful for a researcher to go and check and uh, maybe reuse the data. Right. Very nice yeah. interface. Yeah. 
So, okay, let's go back to other fair things. So we were talking about findable. So it's in a repository described by rich metadata. And to me, this level of metadata is talking about the repository cataloging metadata. Uh, the metadata describe the data and include the identifier and it's registered and searchable. So what does searchable mean? So does it mean searchable by Google or searchable by some uh, structured search like Nomad? Well, I mean, these days- Both many... are useful, no, I guess. Yeah, I mean, ideally you'd want both. And Google's not gonna be able to understand things like chemical formulas and so on. But, you know, still a starting point of many people would be typing it into the generic web search. But by having it in something like Nomad or Zenodo, you're able to uh, do a more strict search than you would otherwise. So the search in Nomad will, uh, will do some semantic search or? Well, that's what it's doing here, isn't it? It's, it looks um, like. like, but I'm not a specialist. Of let's do search. I mean, if you're searching for which elements you want, that's basically the semantic search of the meaning inside the data. I mean, different people have different meanings of semantic, but anyway. Yeah. Okay. So accessible, what does that mean? It means you're able to actually know how to access it. So that basically means, um, okay, so you could have a repository that includes the index of the data, like the card catalog in a library, but it doesn't say what library has the book to check out. So you might know that I need data with this identifier, but how do you get it? And to me, my answer here is you use a good repository. So you don't go and invent your own repository or put it on your own website. Mm -hmm. You put it in a repository and that's the thing that's solved by being there. But already if you want a DOI, you will limit probably yeah. the num where you want to save it, no? Right, or is yeah. It, is it enough or, in, or not? Well, the DOIs and things usually comes from repositories. Yeah, but you, if you, if, what is a good repository and not a good repository? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, DOIs are one of the aspects of having, of being a good repository. But I mean, the more specific it goes, maybe they don't go through the effort of giving DOIs for all the data. But depending on your field, it might still be suitable. Yeah, so we yeah. need to have repository where we can get DOI, plus mm -hmm. we need to have domain specific, yeah. preferably. Um, and, and also, uh, maybe it's obvious, but it should be also cross reference with the publication and with the software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that's a good it, point. Having it in a great repository is one thing, but if Right. If I if I read the paper, I should also go find the data, and if I mm -hmm. find the data, I should find the software, and vice yeah. versa. Yeah. Because um, we we are here talking about like discovering, looking for data sets that I don't know yet about. But I think very often we have the problem that I want to find exactly this data set, and I don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. This one, yes. the one exactly. that belongs to this paper. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and then you go to the link in the paper, and it's a dead link, and you don't know what to do. So, yeah. So long term, okay. it must be long term. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we get to interoperable, which basically means that something can automatically use the data. And this does not mean you can write your own parser for the data to read it in and do something, but it fits in with some existing format. And this, again, is a question of your domain. So does your domain have these existing formats which people use? But mm -hmm. is it only within one? I mean, interoperable from, I mean, I'm not specialist, mm -hmm. but from what I understand is the most complex one yeah. because it's not only in your domain, but it's also inter domain. Mm -hmm. And then there is a problem of uh, like even the basic vocabulary used right. in the different domains. Yeah. And this seems to be very complicated for mm -hmm. me, like, but I would yeah. say at the beginning, make it simple for, mm -hmm. for, for you and uh, your community yeah. as a starting point. Would, would you suggest the same? Or? Yeah. 
Like a good example from a workshop I went to once was they said, so in the Nordics, there's these different data sets you want to combine, but in one country, there's a sex field, and in one country, there's a gender field. And that means, and since you have, you have slightly different definitions, uh, that means the data can't be directly linked and mean what either of them mean alone. So, yeah, what's the answer here? And these are very high level considerations. So if you're listening to this talk, that means you're probably not designing your own worldwide data standards for interoperability. So for that, I would just recommend find what is the best practice in your field and do that. And if your data management plan talks about creating a new standard, well, you know, the XKCD joke problem, there's 11 standards, so I want to unify them with one, and now there's 12 standards, and so yes, on. Yes, I, I think so, that's a good one. You should try to find it. It's, it's, yeah. it's the one you should always remember when you think about format and standard. That's a very good point. Because we always believe point. we have a better way to organize data, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, here I recommend don't try to do anything clever. Do what works best for you, but then don't try to invent things that aren't relevant to you. So I'd rather have some data actually be released with a readme file that explains what's in there. That's something that's never released because you don't have the perfect format for it. Someone else can go and improve these things later. Yes. I have a question and a comment about actually accessible. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that is, how about GitHub? So what if I put the data on GitHub? Is that enough? Yeah. Well, for many of my projects, I consider it enough in the short term. And then in the long term, I would want it to be archived somewhere else. So it sort of depends on what I consider the general value for it. So as you know, and I think as we, yeah, as we have discussed in a previous session some time last year, GitHub can automatically link with Zenodo. So that way, every time you release something, it appears on yeah. Zenodo as a permanent archive. But yeah, when... but then it is, a, it is not a GitHub anymore. I mean, it is GitHub, but you still have a, a record in Zenodo mm -hmm. with a DOI. Yeah. So, so this is still recommended probably yeah. to do that. So maybe here's the question to you all. So at what point would I turn this on for a repository? If it's my own hobby project, would I turn it on? Would I turn it on for every of my repositories by default? No, I don't do that. Like, do you? I don't. Like, I don't do it for any because all of mine are still so new. I consider GitHub good enough for now. And um, in GitHub could go down, but if GitHub goes down, we have a lot bigger problems, I guess. Yeah, but I think the risk is not that like, GitHub disappears. Yeah. I think the risk is that, I mean, I delete my account, mm -hmm. or that, um, and another motivation for actually getting a DOI is that you can get citations and you can see mm -hmm. who is actually using the stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Like if you would, if someone would cite your work, then that would be about the time you could start getting DOIs, even if it's a hobby project or something. Yeah, I think the moment when somebody starts using it. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Yeah, it's a we good point. Also asked to mention this uh, registry of research data repositories that we, the, oh, the you, we haven't data, uh, yet. Did, did we mention? Maybe. Yeah. But yeah. I, uh, I thought we would, uh, we will discuss it for are we using no because this mm. is where you search yeah maybe, maybe. I, had, yeah. I had one more comment about accessibility I'm not sure whether this was accessibility but mm -hmm. and it links to the data formats so sometimes we see data being published in pdf mm. <laughs> and that's not a great format for yeah. data uh, i think anybody who has tried to copy paste a table out of uh, pdf I read somewhere yesterday or the day before, I forgot who wrote it, but that mm. publishing data in PDF, it's a bit like scraping plastic of a pen, uh, you know, when, so it feels exactly <laughs> the same way. 
<laughs> scraping plastic off a of what? Um, you know, like a pan. Uh, like if something yeah. melts in the pan and yes. you have to yeah. clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. I like the yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that, so, that's a good yeah. point, Radovan, because this is usually what we are asked. Always. Yeah, it's funny. PDF. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess that goes to what Anne said. Fair is for machines. So the fair ideas were designed for computers to be able to automatically read things. A PDF may be great for a human to look at, but, well, a human can't script it. And if you can't get it, make it used by the computer, then you're really going to be limited in what you can do with it. Yeah, because at the end, you still need to find it mm -hmm. as a human, I yeah. guess. Should we talk about reusable data? Yes, because that's yeah. uh, that's uh, probably the most uh, important. No? <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't the ultimate goal of uh, yeah. trying to be fair is to to be reused? Right. I mean, this is what uh, what Radovan was saying, to be cited, to be yeah. reused. Mm -hmm. So where do you so, go to f find and reuse data? Yeah. What is your starting point? Well, I guess uh, sort of the starting points are the three things above. So you're able to find it, like know it exists. You're able to get a copy of it. It's in a useful format that you can reuse somehow. And then the reusable is things like it's described well, like it has the necessary uh, properties for it. Uh, it has an acceptable license. So data might be out there, but you don't have a license and then you can't build on it. And it's basically useless. If you don't know where it came from, then you're not going to trust it to reuse it. Yes. So it, this, it happens quite uh, often. I don't know to you, but someone gives you some data mm -hmm. and they know it, it, it has been somewhere it has a DOI, but mm -hmm. it, it's lost Yeah, because they didn't uh, keep the metadata. Mm. So usually I try to find exactly the same uh, mm -hmm. with Google, for instance. Yeah. It, it's quite hard to find the right data. Yeah. So what I, I found quite useful is to use this um, this uh, research tree data or mm. this r3data.org mm -hmm. because you can search uh, with some keywords potential uh, repository mm -hmm. where the data could be ah. saved. At least this is how I used it. I don't yeah. know how you use it yourself. Yeah, so re 3 data is a repository of repositories. So if someone came to me and said, what is the repository for my field? This is where we would point them to. And we'd say, here's like search for chemical structure data, search for whatever else. Okay, so here's Nomad that we were talking about before. Ah, you can so. put uh, like keywords mm -hmm. and they will uh, show you all the repositories with these keywords. So it, it, yeah. it can be quite useful actually. Yeah, so like we see the subjects for it and then these different properties. So yeah. information, it provides access, the repository documents licenses. It says Nomad does provide DOIs for the permanent identifiers. It says it's not certified and it says there's some policy. So overall, this seems like a pretty good repository. And yeah, you can... this is established. I mean, it's well established. Yeah. You can see what's here. Do you have a topic I should search for? Um, for instance, if you want to search uh, all the repository in Finland, would you find all the repositories? Mm. Or you can do know. Norway otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so here's some, okay. There is country Finland. If I click there, I guess I see repositories in Finland that cover Finland. So, yeah. 
Oh, so you have uh, you have some repository in Finland or some repository who talk about yeah. Finland? You well, have both. I think the language bank is mm -hmm. a Finnish thing. Uh, is there is the social data archive? There's Ida. Yeah, some of these are the national services in uh, Finland. So then, when you once you have selected one, you can search more. You you go directly mm. to to the yeah. You have the uh, the repository URL, and then you can uh, start searching. Yeah. So like and did we mention? Did we talk about licenses? Did we mention? Them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. But we didn't say which license uh, we should okay. use. For instance. We, we you search? said, Richard, we need to make sure we, we can use mm. we use the data, but mm. when we deposit data, what should we use? What do you recommend? Well, I guess I'd recommend the most liberal license that fits your needs. So here at Alto, I think the Creative Commons Attribution License is recommended for mm. data, yeah. but of course, this is a very general recommendation. And if someone asks me, I would usually ask, what's, the, what's your community? If I'm making software, I look at other software that's in the domain, and I'll use that. The repository you choose may have a, a single license everything has to be under, or it may have a limited set of license, and that will guide you more than anything else. I think as long as you have some license, then people can do something. So we can reuse, actually. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah. So We're... did we cover all the different letters? We did. Yeah, F we've done. A I R. I think so. Yeah. Did we forget something? We so question on our on mm -hmm. what have we mentioned fairsharing.org and that's new to me. Let's check it out. This is really nice. Mm -hmm. So thanks for that. Yeah, so here we see it says it's a general site recommending things. The problem with a lot of these, there's so many different places that say they will guide you through fair and data management and all that. It's basically such a hot thing. It's like researchers publishing papers. Everyone tries to convince everyone that what they've made is the best. And I don't know if, like I can't comment on this one in particular. I think I've probably seen it before, but um, yeah. I don't know there's, it either. I'm just trying. I mean, there's similar things that have been made in Finland that provide an open science guide and fair data guide and all that stuff. Um, your like our university makes its own guide, and so on and so on. Uh, so, but this one is, looks more general. But, uh... Yeah, this looks pretty good overall. It has some uh, very nice educational uh, material no. but okay. about uh, some definition. I think this is quite nice if you mm -hmm. are very new. Mm -hmm. For instance, we talk about standard, uh, so they explain what mm -hmm. is a standard, focusing on data, metadata. So many things mm -hmm. we discuss, you will find, and this is uh, right. quite well, I think it's quite well explained from yeah. what I can see. So I. This I would recommend it for, for this. Mm -hmm. And it has links to other standards. Is, yeah. it, is the databases tab, does that list other repositories? I haven't tried that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of things. So is it the yeah. same as the, the other one? Or yeah, this like with three data? When I search in databases and uh -huh. I search Nomad, I see what looks like the Nomad repository listed there. So 
yeah, there's so many different people doing similar things. And the great thing is if all of their data is fair, then they can all interoperate and share data. So for example, fair sharing can use the re3 data repository to search other databases and so on. But I guess we're coming to the end of our time, aren't we? Um, yes. How would we summarize what we've said here? Well, the last part about the releasing data, we went through FAIR, but the main point in that wasn't to teach you FAIR. At least that wasn't my point. And I didn't really try to be very complete about it. But it sort of outlined what the main considerations were. And well, everything I said always came down to one thing. Find a good repository and find your what other people do in your field and do that. So repository, metadata, and uh, format, standard yeah. format. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And data management plan. Yes. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. <laughs> but this is, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, the summary is the DMP at the end. But yeah. use it uh, for yourself and for your team. Mm -hmm. OK, let's see. What should we talk about in the next stream? We said about this Python, the best, uh, your favorite uh, Python library. Is it yeah. what we will? I think that's good. We can have a Twitter call for anyone that has suggestions or would like to present something and run it like last time. Maybe go through a lot of things quickly and a few things in more depth. Maybe some of the more esoteric libraries. Any other comments or questions, please let us know. Yeah, I have a question. When, when do you think software management plans will be a thing? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, oh, they're oh. very different. Uh, I mean, when we do the data management plan, actually, we, we put software in it. So the data management plan I showed is very early, so yeah. there is no software yet. Yeah. But we oh, will add the software. Yeah. So it's a well, very good I guess, can we say it will become a thing when someone gets funders to hire graphic designers to make a nice website about software management plans and starts giving talks about it? Even though the same thing can be put in a data management plan now. But still, like software management plan, there's that, or we can say software management plan, use best practices as taught by Code Refinery and GitHub distributed workflow. Like, to me, there's. I mean, it's, it's a bit more here. because it's also the design no, of, uh, of the software. And that's like asking for software architecture plan or something, which I a mean. A bit, at least to think about it. Should be done, but. That's like saying before you do anything, you should plan what you're doing. That's no, like, I don't say before. Oh, I yeah. say it's like the, for the DMP, it's yeah. something live and you, you will uh, yeah. update. But, but you will not write uh, code without thinking. And uh, if you work in a team, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you cannot let everyone do whatever. You need to have some roadmap and yeah. to agree on but, what, where you want to go. So yeah. it's, this is a bit but what is a software management plan no? to me that just called using good practices like even for data management plan we have a name for it and we're talking about it like it's a great thing but it's what people should have always been doing and fund the requirement or not this requirement or not it just enforcing a certain structure on it which you know people could do without the structure and I think forcing structure, the people that wouldn't use good practices anyway, likely aren't going to start doing it because we asked them to fill out more forms. But also to think, uh, independently of data or software, just to think what happens at the end 
So what happens when we stop doing all these good practices, like mm -hmm. at the end of the project? Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to think about it. What will happen to the data and the code? Yeah. And I also wanted to say thank you for all these uh, links that we see on Hack and mm -hmm. D and all these resources that. So thanks so much for that. I also yeah. copied yeah, it on good. top uh, uh, session notes. Yeah. So I learned a lot of new things. Yeah, me too. Again. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we need a we need an intro jingle and an outro jingle, but we are working on it. And yeah. We are nearly had one. <laughs> <laughs> but for copyright reasons, yeah, we had to postpone. Okay. So thanks so much for for listening. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See you all. For watching. In two weeks. Looking yeah. forward. See you. Okay. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.